Hi, I'm Ben, and today we're talking about the Enreal Air. Honestly, this is probably one of the most exciting devices that I've reviewed in a long time. Just a caveat that this review focuses exclusively on the experience of using the Enreal Air with a MacBook. If you want to see a video about use with iPhone, maybe leave me a comment below the like button. I think the most important thing for you to know going into this is that this device is potentially really game-changing especially if you work from home or move around a lot. And what I mean when I say that is that this device has the potential to be as good for visuals as headphones were for music. And it might not be this device, it could be a different one, but either way, this is the start of something really good. It's really exciting to see this kind of technology finally emerging. I've been dreaming about this since I was a little kid. I mean, I was able to walk into a cafe and have two discreet monitors hanging in the air in front of me. That's a big deal, especially considering the price point of this device. But there are also a lot of bugs and some serious issues as well, so let's get into it, shall we? First, let's talk about fit, finish, and hardware. Honestly, the build seems pretty solid. The actual glasses feel well-built with quality materials. Obviously, Obviously, I still don't want to drop them though. They're not indestructible and they don't feel like it. The packaging was mostly cardboard, which is really nice. There's very little plastic here. Yay. Worth noting that they included extra nose pieces, but I never really felt the need to use them even though my nose is huge. I also love that they chose to make the cable fabric. It feels classy. But I should also note that having the cable does make taking the glasses off kind of tricky. And to be clear, I didn't ever actually try to walk away from the computer with the glasses on. But truthfully, this device should absolutely have some kind of MagSafe connector. If there was ever a good use case for that, it's here. Something else I dislike is that this doesn't work with my Mac's USB adapter. Like a lot of MacBooks, today, the Mac I used to test this device only has two USB-C ports. Thank God they fixed that later on. That's why it would be really great if this device worked with any of my dongles. Sadly, even though I tried it with a couple of different ones, I always have to have it plugged directly into one of my two USB-C ports. That said, it is so liberating to be able to roll up to a coffee shop and have three monitors in my pocket. Going back to hardware issues though, I can't use Face ID if I have these glasses on. It just can't see my face well enough, which is kind of frustrating because for most glasses, this isn't an issue. Oh, and on the note of stealth, these are very obviously not regular glasses. I know Xreal is really trying, but yeah, it might not be as bad as wearing, say, a VR headset to a cafe, but to illustrate, I drastically changed my hair in such a way that it looked kind of goofy, and my friend, who loves to give me shit, did not notice until he pointed out my goofy glasses. At first, I thought I might be mad that this doesn't have a battery, but I kind of love that it doesn't need charging. It reminds me of the days of having wired headphones and never having to worry about that. Don't get me wrong, I don't miss wired headphones, but honestly, it is kind of nice. Also, this headset has a couple of buttons. I like that the buttons easily switch the display on and off, kind of like a play pause button for your headphones, so you can be in or out as quickly as you want to be. I like how immersive it is while allowing me to glance down at my physical keyboard or look at my phone. It's goofy that you can't really do this with a VR headset, and honestly, this is a perfect blend of the two. Uh, yes, the field of view could be wider, but all in all, it is really nice. Okay, let's talk about environmental shit. While I love that the packaging uses very little plastic, I'm disheartened to say that Xreal doesn't appear to be aware of the climate crisis. I looked at their website and apparently there's nothing to worry about. There are no climate reports or carbon footprint reports of any kind that I could find. <sighs> if they are making any effort whatsoever to minimize their carbon footprint, they are doing it in secret, which I seriously doubt. For a brand that claims to have the world's best-selling consumer AR glasses, this is frustrating. Being environmentally conscious is a part of having a professional brand image and they don't have it. It also just makes the brand less likable. But anyway, let's talk about what the actual display is like. It is remarkably sharp and crisp. I love this. I think if you look closely, you might be able to see a tiny, tiny bit of screen door effect, but unless you're a professional photo editor, you will be fine and you probably won't notice. I was also impressed at the quality of the video that you get from it. On that note, I did try watching some TV and movies on it, and honestly, it's so nice to be able to just lay in bed and watch something, especially since the alternative is strapping an uncomfortable oculus to my face. And yeah, I could use my TV, but when it's sunny, that's kind of difficult, so this is nice. I should also note that there's a little ghosting, almost like a reflection above the video image, which is kind of not great. Uh, honestly though, I do love the way these function essentially as a pair of headphones for your screen. It's good enough that I would consider making these a full-time part of my workflow. Okay, now let's talk about software, which incidentally is also kind of where we get to the bad stuff. Initially, trying to get the software to work on a Mac was a nightmare. Like, I get that it's in beta, but holy shit. 
Eventually, I gave up and just let it run while my computer was doing other things. And a couple of days later, I plugged in the headset and it just started working. Um, something I do like is that if you don't use the really buggy Nebula software, you can just plug in the headset and it will function as a second display. Something that annoyed me about this was that I was unable to use my laptop monitor in addition to the three virtual monitors that I have for some reason. And whenever I was using the virtual displays, my laptop will only mirror what one of the virtual displays is doing. And again, it's nice to be able to use these like headphones for my eyes, but still, what if I want to be a power user and get four monitors going? Oh yeah, the worst and probably nastiest bug in the system right now is that when I go into mission control, it goes back to thinking that it's this unbelievably wide monitor. Not only that, but it also reverses my left and right eye and mission control is unusable with these, like you just can't. For some reason, it's trying to display this extremely long image instead of giving me the normal view. It's a mess. There's another bug where the mouse gets stuck to head tracking and I can't use it for anything until I unplug the headset. I like that I can unplug it and then plug it back in and it remembers the configuration of my Windows, but I think that's more down to Mac software than it is to Unreal. Also, yeah, I did have to unplug it multiple times to kind of just reset and get rid of the bugs, so beware. I think one of the biggest problems with this is that it's not intuitive and there's really no included manual on how to set it up properly, so I'm basically just fucking with things until it works. Okay, thoughts, summary, and then we're done. One of the things that occurred to me was that maybe we don't want a semi-transparent screen floating in front of us. This device comes with a cover for the front of the glasses in case you want darkness, and I experimented with this pretty extensively, and even at full brightness, there were times when I couldn't see a word properly or a section of the screen because there was a bright white spot behind it, say a car or something that was parked nearby. A great way to fix this would be electrochromic lenses, which compensate for the light or dark colors that are behind the semi-transparent screen. Electrochromic lenses and a software update would really make this kind of perfect. Lastly, I really do love the way you have enough peripheral vision so that even when you have the blockers on, you don't really feel isolated from the world in the way that you would with a VR headset. Okay, summary. So what's exciting to me about these is there is an actually usable product here, one which does a lot of the things that I would use an Oculus Quest to do in my office life, but it does it without the bulk and hassle. Now, I can't tell you if you should buy these, but if you want to go into hacker mode while you're on the go and be super productive or even just watch a movie in bed, these are fantastic. Even with the software bugs, it's still very functional. And ideally, the software bugs should be ironed out when this software comes out of beta. Once they've released a non-beta version of the software, I would be sorely tempted to pick up either this pair or the next gen, which maybe has a make safe adapter. This is the start of something great. Stay tuned. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Since you're here, maybe smash subscribe. Uh, it helps me a lot. And if I'm being totally honest, it does kind of, you know, <clears throat> brighten my day a little. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. You're cool. Uh, love yourself, etc.